Good morning, teachers and fellow BGPians. Welcome back to another edition of BGPS News Flash. This is where we bring you news in a flash, inform you about how it affects you and make you think. I am Rohan from Five Respect and I am Benjamin from Five Respect. What news are we, fo- are we focusing on today, Benjamin? Today, we are focusing on the public consultation as to whether Dover Forest will be developed or not. Dover Forest is a part of the Ulu Pandan Estate that has been zoned for residential development. Sorry, but I don't really understand. So what happened, Rohan? Singapore, Singaporeans will have another month to share their thoughts on the future of Dover Forest. Some time back, KTB engaged an external consultation to conduct an environmental study of the Ulu Pandan area, including Dover Forest. The findings from the study were made public to allow for feedback. This period of public consultation has since been extended. Let us watch a video to find out more about what happened. Green spaces will have to compete with other land use needs, particularly with the growing need for housing. The government is exploring other development strategies, such as redeveloping existing sites like golf courses. But developing forested areas is still a possibility for now. The parliamentary response on conservation followed weeks of public debate about the fate of the Clementi and Dover forests. Housing is a pressing need for Singapore. It's a reality that is in conflict with other land use demands, such as space for greenery. National Development Minister Desmond Lee says the evidence comes from the continued high demand for public flats. Last year, more than five Singaporeans applied for every one available built-to-order flat. So why did this happen, Benjamin? This extension happened because HDB continued to receive feedback from the residents living in the area, as well as members of the public. Suggestions include retaining the forest and redeveloping other older housing blocks, vacant school buildings and empty fields. How does this affect us? Some people have suggested that it should be developed, while others suggest that the site should be fully retained for greenery. There are also a handful who believe that nature can coexist with the new housing. Let's watch some interviews to find out the views of our schoolmates and teachers. Would you choose to conserve the forest or develop the forest into HDB houses? I think uh, we can um, develop it into a HDB because we need to build houses for better for, for people who don't have proper houses. I support the environment because without much environment, we won't have much breathable air and animals won't have place to live. I think we should conserve it because um, right now there's a lot of buildings around already so it would be very nice to have a place dedicated for greenery and for nature for us to take a walk and all that. Do you think nature can coexist with the new housing and why? I, I guess because at least the nature is not fully gone so um, that at least that we have some nature to look at and feel calm with it so that um, people won't feel so stressed about it that um, the nature that is fully gone. Yes, I think that the nature can coexist with the, with the development because it the nature provides us with fresh air. The trees provide us with the fresh air and uh, so that we can breathe normally. Especially since um, I, I think I'm aware that there are some HDB blocks with rooftop gardens and all that on top. So I think it's actually doable for uh, nature to be coexisting with buildings. I personally, I personally am on the conservation side as the forest is home to at least 158 species of animals, including critically endangered ones and 120 plant species. Well, I support developing Dover Forest as Singapore already has many nature parks. I do not see why we should conserve this forest when more housing is needed to meet Singapore's growing population. I agree with you that housing is a pressing issue in Singapore. However, However, let's not forget the important role 
for us play in limiting the effects of global warming. Oh, okay. Tell me more. Global warming is caused by excessive greenhouse gases trapping and absorbing heat. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. If the atmosphere has too much greenhouse gases, more heat will get trapped, leading to higher global temperatures. Oh yes, I remember from my science lesson that through the process of photosynthesis, trees make take in carbon dioxide. So if we cut down too many of our forests, there will be more carbon dioxide, which the trees are not there to remove. That's right. Forests such as Dover Forest Dust have an important role to play in maintaining or even reducing our global temperatures. I suppose that as a nation, we will have to come up with ways to coexist with, with nature. We need to carefully think through any plans we might have to develop our forests. Now, let's link this to our citizenship disposition. We can link the issue to a sense of belonging. Singapore is our country and it's our responsibility to contribute ideas and opinions so that our government can make a more informed decision. And this also links up to our BGPS value of responsibility, as we are responsible for the decisions that we make. We can also link this to the BGPS value of compassion. Dover Forest is home to many species of animals, thus we should show more care and concern to these animals. With that, we have come to the end of BGPS News Flash. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye! All right, very good morning, BGPians. Welcome back to school. It is uh, week eight of term one starting today, which also means that it is just three weeks more to our March holidays. I hope it's something that you're looking forward to. Let's end these last three weeks of term one strongly. All right. I, would, I just want to also say thank you to Rohan and Benjamin from Five Respect uh, for presenting the news flash this morning. If you see them later in class or along the corridors, do tell them, well done. Thank you also for sharing with us about Dover Forest and what the government is doing to help to collect feedback about what we can do about the forest. Now today, we also uh, commemorate the World Scouts Day as well as the World Thinking Day for the Girl Guides or the Brownies. And so you will see uh, our scouts and our brownies wearing their full uniform in school today. There are altogether 50 million scouts in the whole world, as well as 10 million brownies and guides. And what they are doing today is really a testimony of how the organization first started in the past and how it has continued to grow from strength to strength. So if you see a scout in uniform or a brownie in uniform today, look at them and say, well done, be proud of being a scout or be proud of being a brownie. Now next, I wanted to just say thank you also for the couplets, the Chinese New Year couplets that have been uh, put up in school. As you know, we have been celebrating Chinese New Year, Total Defense Day in the past two weeks, as well as the Student Leaders Investiture. And in case you are not aware of, you have you seen this in the at outside the general office. Okay, these are the Chinese New Year couplets that were written uh, by a parent, uh, Ethan Kao's uh, from Tukom. His his mother helped us to write these couplets, and also these couplets over here outside the lobby. Okay, now. What are the couplets actually? I will just explain a little bit about what the couplets on the left 
as well as the couplets on the right mean. Okay, the couplet on the left states Hua Kai Fu Gui Chong Chong Si, and the couplet on the right states Yin Zhuan Qian Kun Fu Bu Gao. Now, what it means is that for Hua Kai Fu Gui, it means that the flowers will always bloom and bring fortune and wealth to us with multiples of joy and blessing. So that's the meaning of Hua Kai Fu Gui. Chong Chong Si. Now the couple on the left is Yin Zhuan Qian Kun Bu Bu Gao. It means round and round the universe. Yin Zhuan Qian Kun Bu Bu Gao means we will climb higher and higher and higher in whatever that we do, whether it's in our studies, in our CCAs, whatsoever. Okay, so thank you to Ethan's mom for writing this couplet for us. And as for these Chinese couplets that were written by the Chinese department of our school, and especially is credited to Madam Fang Fang. Madam Fang Fang wrote this for us. And it states, Qing Chun Zuo Ban, Qin Xie Zhao, on the left. And on the right, it states, Yi Chai Wei Guo, Kong Chi Chi. Now, what does Qing Chun Zuo Ban, Qin Xie Zhao mean? It means that with youth as our partner, Qing Chun Zuo Ban. Qin Xie Zhao means we must always be diligent and to be diligent early. We have to be diligent early, diligent in our work. And on the right, it says, Yi Chai Wei Guo. Okay, let's use our education for our country. Kong Chi Kong Chi Chi, before it's too late. So what it means, these couplets actually mean, is that we need to be diligent and use our education wisely. And I hope that when you see the couplets, you will remember the meaning of the couplets and how it can spur us towards doing better in whatever that we do in school. Now, that was for the Chinese New Year celebrations. And in connection with Chinese New Year celebrations, which we did uh, about on the 15th, on the, on the 12th or 11th of February, we also commemorated Total Defense Day as well as the launch of our 20th anniversary celebrations with the theme on grateful for our past, empowered for our future. Now when we talk about being grateful for our past, we also want to remember our school and how it started and we shared snippets of uh, our school history at that point in time and you know that in 2001, 20 years ago, our school was first merged from Bedok View Primary School and Bedok South Primary School. Now, if you were to look at the history of these two schools, now I went to do a bit of research on it because the school history repository that's found on the Academy of Singapore Teachers website reveals that Bedok South Primary School was actually started in 1981 and Bedok View Primary School was first started in 1977 and they then merged in 2001 to become our school, Bedok Green Primary School. But what's more interesting is that for Bedok View Primary School, in 1977, it was actually the first primary school to be built in Bedok Town. Did you know that? You didn't know that, right? Neither did I. For those of you who knew that, well done. But what this means also that because Bedok Green Primary School came from Bedok, View Primary School, it also means that Bedok Green Primary School was actually the very first primary school to be built in Bedok Town. Now, that means that we are the first primary school, right, over here. That's an interesting fact. And in 1977, Bedok View started because of the bulging and the, the bulging HDB estate in Bedok Town. I will share a little bit more about Bedok Town the next time I see you and I wish you a very happy week 8 ahead. See you again.